Hey, what's up, YouTube? I am your girl, April BB, and this is for the couples channel, Mr. and Mrs. J Mook Bang. And I am having Rising Sun. Rising Sun is a sushi Asian infused spot here in H Town that I love to go to. I got me a couple of rolls. I got a rock and roll sushi roll back here. And then up here, I have the crunchy, crunchy tempura, or crunchy shrimp roll, basically. And then here, I got money bags. I call them money bags. Looking like a money bag, looking like a money bag. They call them shrimp purses some places. The first time I had these were at a place in San Diego called the Taste of Thai. Loved them. And they call them money bags. And since Cardi B is all about the money bag, I'm going to call these money bags. And you can see, I'm going to dip it in some sweet Thai chili sauce. Now these I made at home. Taste one. Just pop them out of the oven. And I got them in the freezer section at the grocery store. Mmm. I couldn't resist. I had to have one. They gave me chopsticks, y'all, but your girl, she's not well versed at using chopsticks. I normally try to get training wheels when I go someplace. I call them training wheels. Because they they look like this, but this is actually something that went to electrical plug at the end. But they look like this, and you put them on your chopsticks, and they move in and out. Because I am challenged. But my niece, Kayla, shout out to Kayla. She real good. She know how to use those things real, real good. Ooh. I'm so behind on Big Brother. I'm on episode six. So much to catch up on and talk about. We got Super Bowl coming up. What y'all doing for Super Bowl? Me and Mr. Brando are going to cook. Might do a mukbang. Look at that. Can you see that? It's got crab meat, cream cheese, because I'm allergic to avocado, and shrimp. Ooh, why did I dip that in this sauce? But it's okay. Mmm. Here's my soy sauce. This is what I need. So I'm gonna go back to season six. I'm almost, I mean not season six, episode six, uh celebrity big brother. So as you know, Kato didn't put is it Kato? I think Kato put him on. Yeah. Kato put Tamar and Lindsay Lohan Mama Dina on the block. Mmm. If y'all ever in Houston, check out Rising Sun. Look on Yelp. They have an awesome happy hour. Happy hour all day Sunday. And happy hour Monday through, I think, Friday. Like your traditional hours, like 3 to 6 or 3 to 7. That makes some great infused drinks. Mm. And I'm a sucker for a good cocktail. Well, anyway, Kmart and Dina's on the chopping block. Let me tell you. You know, women were very calculating. I don't agree with Tamar's approach, but she goes off on Kato. She's screaming and hollering at him. Mm. Smells 
Sprite Zero. Not a big soda pop drinker, but you know. I figure I'd do something to make me, you know, burn. Because that's what y'all here for. That and the smacking. All smacking. So yeah, she might go off on Kato in front of everybody. And I kind of think it's part of her game, right? Because she does go off on everybody. And you kind of want to keep somebody around that people don't like. You know, because at the end, it's, a, it's all about a popularity contest and aligning yourself with the right people. Let's see there. Can you see that? So much life coming from this side. There you go. Mm -hmm. Come eat with me. So, she go off and she throwing them under the bus about stuff he said and putting a spin on his words. Well, you said that I need to go home and cook and clean and take care of my child. Like I'm not a good mother or something. Just uh, tell more antic. Traditional Tamar antics. However, Zena does the damsel in distress. She cries on Kato's shoulder. She like, <laughs> going home and this, that, and the other. And I'm just so scared. I'm so worried. I'm so concerned. And Hey, don't fall for that mess. Men hate to see a woman cry. Dina, you smart. Because without telling her the plan, he tells Dina that she don't have nothing to worry about and that he's going to make it his duty to get her off the block. I'm just like, see, she worked that mojo. Mm-hmm. She worked it, honey. Now, this episode was for lightning and speed because remember, the last episode, they just put them up. Honey, somebody gonna be out the door by the end of, by the time I finish this conversation. So, you got Ryan... Nope, not Ryan. You got uh, Dina and Tamar on the block. But ultimately, Kato, Tom, Lolo, and Natalie are planning to backdoor Ryan. Ryan Lofty. The Olympic swimmer. Oh my gosh. Looking like a money bag. Tasting like a money bag. I'm money bag here every time. It's like a shrimp with a dumpling sauce inside or dump, like vegetables and stuff. It's like an egg roll. But look at it. Ain't it cute? Don't it look like a money bag? Looking like a money bag. Mm -hmm. Let me stop playing with my food. So they outside them, what, four? Yeah, Natalie, Lolo, Tom, and Kato. I've been saying this. Kato and Tom. Final two deal. You can tell. This is the only way they get down together. And of course, Natalie and Natalie gave their deal away. So it's Natalie and Lolo. Mm. I'm ready for y'all. I don't know how people get on the front now. Mm. Might have to say some of the sushi for later. 
and um, soon as my money bags because those are hot you know sushi anytime cold hot it don't matter I think it's a cucumber might be inside of this one but as the as the four of them are sitting outside contemplating how they gonna execute getting Ryan evicted there's these idiots are sitting outside, don't know the sliding door open, nothing, not aware of their surroundings. Guess who hear everything? Mm hmm Ryan. I'm like, boy, boy. Oh, sorry, y'all. I had to do that. But that's what y'all come here for. A little burp. All smacking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he overhears, right? So they try to play it off because they see him. Yeah, it's Dave, Ryan. What's going on with you? Come on down. He like, no, I'm good. And he kind of like way he had an attitude, right? So Tom's like, you know what? It's not a good idea for us to be seen together right now. Let's disband. Let's let's disperse. I mean, he didn't already see you, but if you running in the house telling other people, then yeah, you're right about that part. Man, you can't even see what's in this roll. Look like just a bunch of crab meat, like crab meat mixture. But I could have got the tip in. Hmm. Oh, it's crab meat and cream cheese. Oops, wrong one. I keep wanting to dip it in the. The sweet Thai chili, but it's really got to go in the soy. This is where my use of chopsticks would come in handy. Hmm. So, they take off. Ryan and Joey confront. And I'm not really confront, because Tamar's the only one who's really confrontational, right? But they like, Kato, let me holler at you. Ryan and Joey sit there. So, he back there in the room with them. And they like, okay, what's up? Let us know if we got a pack. He's like, huh, what? Like, he dances around the question. He's like, you know... I need you to be honest with me. Ryan especially like, I need you to be honest with me. Joey's like going along for the ride. He's like, yeah, be honest. And so, he was like, look, I got to put somebody up, right? If Tamar or Dina gets themselves down. So, we'll see how this thing play out. But there's, <clears throat> there's no guarantees. So, they said, all right, thanks. And they're pretty much like, yeah, we better pack our shit. So, they had this video competition that was, I wouldn't say simple, but was over at the blink of an eye. And it's called something worldwide global or some mess like that. And uh, Tom Green wins. So, you know, Tom Green is Kato's right hand man. He do exactly what he told Dina we'd do. If he, if, if, if don't worry, we're going to take you down. They take Dina down. Guess who go up? Ryan. So at this point, you already know what time it is. Ryan got his ass evicted. Anyway. I don't know. I can kind of see Tamar. Little antics and stuff. And when people really think about the game... They're like, okay, it's best to keep Tamar around. Ain't nobody gonna vote 
for her if it's final two. And you know what? Candy been treading lightly. She kind of pops in, pops out, trying not to create a whole bunch of chaos and confusion because she don't want her name to be mentioned. So, okay, maybe I could show y'all this one. It's, it's, like I said, it's just a bunch of crab meat. There you go, crab meat and cream cheese. And that's because I'm allergic to avocado. I can't, can't do it, but it's normally avocado instead of the cream cheese. So, anyway, Ryan was out the house. It's, it's a wrap for good old Ryan. And the problem with Ryan was he aligned himself too soon with Jonathan. Mm. It's best if you don't let people know you align. Like, be cool. Be cordial. Move around. With people in the house. But, you know, not everybody needs to know that you're cool with a particular person. However, I do feel like they pay Tamar and Candy together because they black girls and they know each other outside the house. So even though all they do all that arguing, fussing and fighting, they're not the house the housemates aren't convinced that that they're uh against each other. Let's say that, that they're against each other. They feel like one won't vote the other off. And you know what? Hey, black girl magic. That's right. Don't do that. I'm hoping, but we don't know. But honey, Tamar. Yeah, and then Tamar. Mm, excuse me. I have to tell you about the next episode. But I, I watched it already. I just ain't, ain't, ain't ready to speak on it. Okay. So anyway, that's it for Celebrity uh, Big Brother. I keep wanting to say Celebrity Apprentice Child. I said, like embedded in my mind. I don't know why. Celebrity Big Brother. Mm. Okay, so let me tell y'all something else. So I, I would think most of y'all that follow me also watch uh, Love After Lockup, right? So me and Mr. Brando did a video on Love After Lockup. So... That whole love triangle with Sarah, Megan, and Michael. I was in this group, the Savage group, and we kind of go back and forth talking about stuff. Then I got my account on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, y'all. If y'all got a Twitter, it's April BB at April BB 411. What's the 411? What's the 411? But anyway, so Sarah, she's the wife to Michael that's getting two time, right? Sarah Simmons, that's her name. Michael Simmons, that's his name. He the convict. And these two women, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. But, okay. Anyway. In this episode, he has skirted off to go be with the other woman, Megan. The one he's actually saying that that's his queen. All right. If you think so. I think Michael only true to himself. He don't even care about his own child. But... Anyway, so he bones out on his wife, Sarah, and say she's his wife because he married her. And he goes off to see Megan. I call her Nut, me and Brandon joke. We call her Nut Megan. And she's the virgin. She's the one that's going to give up her virtue to him. Well, she ain't seen him in two weeks. So Michael picks an argument, skirt out to go be with old girl so he can take that, so he can pop that, do that. And um, he picks an argument with her, he leaves in her car, drives up to Niagara Falls to go meet Megan, Nut Megan. So, honey, they do what they do and they, out, you know, go to Niagara Falls. Then they plan on going out to dinner. He and his phone and Sarah then text him talking about, oh, your P.O. was looking for you. Um, you know, and anybody that has been out, like he ain't been out a good month or two. So he all concerned and worried and whatnot. And I get it, as he should be. But I also feel like some of this stuff is either made up by him, because he's a a liar, 
or may or we tv is helping him make it up either way but nonetheless he gets a text message so when he gets that message he like hey babe change your plans this girl's crying because she didn't just give up her virginity to dude and she's just in love with him and they gonna go out to dinner and just she can finally get to spend time with him he was like no i gotta go change your plans my p.o looking for me sarah over there you know she in her feelings anyway because she's like that's my husband and he can't even be here with me like he needs to be here or whatever so i go out to sarah's twitter and she is like going off right or no she's defending herself that's what she's doing and let me find that So, and it's a good thing I did screenshots because she took this tweet down and it was out there and everybody was giving her a hard time. So she said, to make this clear, I never said his PO contacted me looking for him or none of that. He a damn liar. Perfect excuse to leave her and put the sh on me. It was Father's Day, and he had to come up with something. F-O-H. You know what that stands for. Hashtag love after lockup. Hashtag love after lockup. Now, I ain't going to give y'all our dialogue back and forth, but she claims she never sent that text message. But go to my community tab. Come on, come back. Go to my uh, Mr. and Mrs. J community tab. I posted it because... All of our Twitter, the Twitter rant, the back and forth, I put it in a video on my main channel, on my channel, April BB. And you'll see what she got to say about all that. Anyway, I don't know if I believe her or not. What y'all believe? You think she uh, over there just going through it and production, between production and Michael, they setting her up to look like the villain? In my eyes, Michael's a damn villain. But anyway, I'm out of here, y'all. I gotta go. Until next time. Bye.